sim simply because we have no more room for anyone to come anyway. Um, thank you all for coming. My name is Nasser Abad, and I'm the convener of this lecture series. And I'm very happy today to have the director of our sister organization, actually our older sister organization. His organization was founded in 1977. Our organization was founded, organization namely the Arafan program was founded in 1978. And we actually are organically connected, even though administratively we're not. Um, and we came into being as a program for the study of Islamic architecture as a response to a need to intellectualize the celebration of architecture that the Khan Award was put together in order to achieve, in order to basically bring an interest in Islamic architecture to the world and to a level of recognition that they didn't have before the Khan Award. I don't know how many of you know about the history of the Arachan Award, but it has been glorious. Namely, it has actually really achieved something that could not have been achieved without establishing an international award with the kind of stringent and extremely thoughtful conditions about nomination, selection, evaluation, and ultimately the reward. What it has done is something on two levels. It has actually heightened the interest in Islamic architecture in the Islamic world and helped improve the quality of architecture that is being produced in the Islamic world and has allowed that architecture, and you could see it in the development actually of the kind of projects and the quality of the projects over the 14 cycles that it has had so far, it allowed those projects and that, the, that architecture to connect to trends and development in architecture across the world and to get itself to be noticed by those trends of architecture. But at the same time, it has also shifted and changed the discourse about architecture in the Islamic world. When it first started, one of the sharpest critiques of the Arachan world came from Sibir Bozloan. And it was about the, what today is called identity politics. It was actually an award at the beginning that felt that it needed to assert an Islamic identity to an architecture that it did not have that recognition. Ultimately, the award came of age, and the award today is basically an award about architecture that happens to be produced in the Islamic world. But it's an architecture that needs to be recognized and needs to be celebrated for its architectural qualities, not for its responses to Islamic needs for expression or self-expression, which some of the earlier projects heavily emphasized. So what this, our speaker today, Farouk Derakhshani, has actually witnessed this. He arrived in the Arachan Award fresh out of architectural school in 1982. We met actually around the same time. And uh, he started working and moving all the way up to becoming the director of the Arachan Award in 2006. He basically had witnessed all the development. And I would say that he probably had played a much more important role than he would admit in the development of the award, or that he would allow himself to admit. Um, and he is really one of the major movers and shakers of the Arachan Award, and has been that way silently, modestly. He never sort of like would come out and say, this is really how I want this award to move. But the award moved in directions that Farouk wanted. And I witnessed that because also I've been around all of this time. So I'm very happy that Farouk is actually here today to speak about the award in general and about the 14th cycle of the award, of which six projects have been awarded. And the ceremony happened in Kazan, in the Republic of Tataristan, in Russia, this last October. And some of us in this room were there. And uh, Farouk has taken the award on the road again to introduce the working of the award, the goals of the award, and the celebration of those that have been awarded. This is something that Farouk has actually 
nurtured since the beginning, which is basically to establish with, with something that we're not doing here today, but to establish a series of seminars related to the award and to go into different countries to introduce through the awards and through the projects awarded the themes about what is today the interest in the field of architecture in the Islamic world. So you could see if you look at the development of all of these seminars, all of these discussions around the award, the kind of interest, the kind of concerns, the kind of problems that architecture in the Islamic world has been facing in the last now half a century. So um, I would actually say that without the Al Khan Award, the study of contemporary architecture in the Islamic world would have been really quite underdeveloped. And uh, if there is an achievement to the award, it's not just the recognition of the projects, but actually is that nurturing, that cultivation of a discourse on architecture that is now a strong discourse, a competitive discourse to other discourses that are determining how architecture is thought about in our day and age. So we will start the event today with Farouk presenting the award for probably half an hour. More. <laughs> Way more. <laughs> Which means that we're keeping you for a very long time. Because after Farouk finishes, the three Aga Khan professors in this room would come to this table and will discuss with Farouk the points about the Aga Khan Award for Architecture. And the three are myself and Gulrun Nejipolu, the Aachan professor from Harvard, and Jim Westcott, the Aachan professor from MIT. So we are in for some uh, um, longish discussion. We will try to be extremely brief in our comments <laughs> so that we won't keep you longer than we usually do. So without further ado, welcome. Baru. introduction long one. I don't know how much to deserve it. Um, last week in London I started, I was giving a talk and uh, looking at the people sitting around. A um, story came to my mind I'm going to repeat, which is the Nasruddin Hoja story. And the Nasruddin Hoja story is that once they invite, uh, the he's invited to a village, they feed him, so in the evening he goes and preaches. He goes up and says, uh, do you know what I'm going to talk about? And people said, no. He said, well, if you don't know what I'm going to talk about, what's the, what should I do that? So he goes. Next day he comes. Again, he's well fed. And he says, do you know what I'm going to talk about? Everybody said, yes. He said, well, if you know what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go. So then the third day he came. And people said, OK, half of all would say yes, half would say no. Then he would say what he was going to say. So they said half said no, half said yes, and they said, well, those who know the story, those half tell the other ones what the story is. <laughs> so I, because a lot of people are sitting here, you've been involved with the award since all these years, you've known us, I've been, I've been in different capacities, I've seen Bob and Dan I've worked with some people in very different places, very different moments. And I've had this privilege of being, it's, uh, doing this thing for such a long time. Now, today, I was, I had my, I've structured this, uh, First, I wanted to get, not to say much and show a film and then say, okay, let's discuss. This gentleman called me in the morning and said, no, 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 I prefer slides, no film. So I'm going to have to so I'm going to put a story together. And the story is going to be in three parts. I'm going to talk about the, um, the history of the award, and how it works. Then I'm going to talk about the, the, the 14th cycle. And then I'll present the six... Uh, uh, projects. So that's, you have to bear with me. So what happened is that all of you know there's some, a gentleman here who makes all these posters. So this is the f another story which I had to bring. So when I went to his office right now and I said, where is this, where did you get this photo? He said, oh, this is photo, this is a plane of the Halliburtons when they went around and they took aerial photographs. I said, but I've got a connection to that plane. He said, what's the collection? So he helped me a few seconds. We found this photo, which this is my brother. <coughs> in, when the first plane came to Tehran and flew in, she went there and she went in the plane with the Halliburton's and he, she went around Tehran to see it. So I thought very, 
and that, that was a very funny incident which happened, which was made me, it was for me, was good. Uh, now, the award point we start is the, I'm going to talk about the history and vision. There's one important thing which Nasser was explaining is that whenever you make an institution, institution making is a very important um, um, venture. It is very important that you have to have, think a lot before you do something. So this is what we, I have inherited from this long uh, pro process that how the award was started. So the story is, as you can say, that His Highness was in interested in architecture because he was responsible for building uh, uh, for his community as also in his own capacity. And then he, went, he was looking and seeing that how come, after the, especially after the uh, Second World War, the situation uh, in Islam, the Islamic world, the Muslim cities, have deteriorated. And how can we help it? And you cannot go and help. So how can we influence? So the Argon Ward was created in 1977. It was, these were the few words, I mean, it's just half as she was put them together with, uh, with the notes, to protect the past and inspire the future, you know, very nice words, to improve quality of life. Now, I'm going to just stop on the word quality of life. Today, quality of life has become a very ordinary word, because we use it a lot. But I, I was very surprised when I saw that His Highness uh, was using this term in 1980 in his first speeches. The first speeches that he had for the ceremony, he was saying that the most important thing is to how we can have an impact on the quality of life of people through architecture. And this is something which we're going to look at. It. And then it is to, it's, uh, it is to examine, analyze, understand, and influence. Now, we're coming to the word influence because that's where, if you want to make a change, you have to be able to influence people, not the people who are doing it. Architects, in a way, they're technicians. They are, what they go to school is to learn how to do something. But the whole thing is that what you're doing and why you're doing it for who you're doing. So in having an influence on the clients is one of the most important um, elements of the art and work for architecture. And that is one of our goals. It's not only to have, because we don't want to preach to people who believe in what we're saying, it's just to preach other people who don't understand. And especially when I'm talking about the clients, the clients are not only the decision makers, because you've got the people in the, in the private sector, you've got uh, people in government, and you've got also the users. If we can one day reach the people that the people want something better, they will ask a better thing from their, um, um, governments, etc., then you can have a say that you could have an impact on the people. So this is a famous story of uh, photographs. Unfortunately, we don't have many of these photographs. His Highness brought together around him a group of people to be consultants. So a lot of people you might know here. So he went, there was a different people who were there for different reasons. Um, here you've got besides Hassan Fati, who's sitting next to his highness. He came later. But the first people who were uh, uh, much involved were Oleg Rabar, who has been teacher of a lot of people here, and Bill Porter, who was a dean of MIT. So um, Oleg brought Bill um, Porter. And then they had, also they had another, other, another Charles Correa. Charles, H.H. knew, uh, His Highness knew Charles before. So he came in as a person. So Charles Korea knew another Ardalan. So that's how it works. Then the other person there, Gar Campbell, was the uh, landscape architect from Sasaki, who was working for the Archon. Sergio Kassan was building, uh, for some, Sergio Kassan is someone when I was an architect, uh, stu architecture student. He was one of the ones, everybody wanted to see his projects in London, etc. So he was, and Renata Hassan Abin Khan and Doan Kuba. So these were the people that Alcon brought as the first steering committee. Now, these people really established this system. And that establishing system is, is, has been, is very important. How we can make an institution which is relevant to its time? And it has proven that all these years, it is an institution which is what we do in the awards are relevant to its time. It's changing. And how you can make sure that this system always is in this whole kind of a dialogue between the two groups of different groups of people and make it there. But it's very important that it's not only the, in the steering community, but that there are, there are different people come around. 
So one of the things, the first thing is that yes, we're going to have, as Nasser was explained, that we have a, we're going to establish an award. But by giving an award, we're saying, don't, don't be like that. Don't think that you are the, in that part of the world. You have all the problems. Someone else in another country with the same problems has come with a better solution. So this whole thing is how you can um, explain, tell the stories of success stories to others to learn and to be able to enable themselves. So during this thing, they, said, they thought they saw that they don't know this, the Muslim world. And by creating a series of seminars, the idea was not only to understand um, the subjects. So each of the seminars that they had was a theme, conservation, housing, um, identity, etc. but also going to different parts of the world. So who was here? Was she talking about China? Was, this, was Susan here? Like we talked about China. That's where the church is in China. So, I'm sorry, I went. So this, what happened is that they made the um, eligibility criteria. So first was that the, any project, the project only for complete projects, not for projects which are um, um, drawing board. So projects should be completed, uh, completed and used for one year. They have to demonstrate service to Muslims although they're not, uh, they don't have to be uh, so, uh, um, only for them. And thirdly, that they should not be connected with the Jews <coughs> as well as the Alcon and AKDN. So now, what is this the second one? The first one we can understand, because you have to have enough time. There is a kind of a post-occupancy. Really. You have to know that the project exists, it works, and is, it has responded to the uh, to what the architects and the client wanted to do. In most cases, there are many, many cases that the projects are extremely good projects, but they do not work because of shortcomings, not only from the short arch architect's point of view, but also for architects, but others as well. Uh, the second thing is that service to Muslims, that was a decision by the Alcon. He wanted to have, it was very specific, that I want to have an impact on Muslim societies. Muslim societies have been going through a change in the um, 1970s, 1960s, still people were, there were some countries were called Islamic countries. But I never used the word Islamic architecture, I said Islamic countries, right? And, and then you have the Organization of Islamic Conference, who were 40 something countries that they got together. But the reality of the world is that today, if you go to Kuwait or to Dubai, maximum there's 65 to 60%, 55% Muslims. The rest are Christians and Hindus who are working. Because if we're talking, we're not talking about the people who are having the passport of those countries. We're talking about who are they're living there and they're using these buildings. These, they're, they're part of the society. Uh, at the same time, you've got places like in France, you've got a million, two, two and a half million, three million in France. You've got cities in England. There are small towns, which are all like Bradford, if you go to Bradford, 85% are Pakistanis. So, you know, that's why the Muslim societies do not have the same s sense of place anymore. This is something which we can, it's an interesting uh, subject that uh, we have had with three projects and soon their book is going to come out, which is going to be talked about. The third one is that his, the outcome himself, as a, a, someone who was responsible for architecture and was very keen on architecture, has created a series of projects. Which, for example, if you talk about hospitals, the Arkham Hospital in Karachi is a very important subject, but it cannot be nominated. So no project which has got to do anything with the Arkham can come to the award. So the other thing which was very important for the first day, we are celebrating a project, and no project is the work of an architect. No architect can say that I have done this from A to Z. A pro a, any architecture project is a, is a work of a group of people. And so with this award was the, f and the first time that we're giving awards to the project, and that's why we're bringing the mason, the master mason, and the architect exactly the same level. The clients, all of them are come together. So this is the famous uh, uh, mason who, his photograph was in 1980 on the front cover of Domus, and that was a big, that one photo was a big change in looking again at this area of the world that people didn't know. Um, 
during years, these are just the numbers that we have. We've got, you know, how many countries, we've got projects, nominated projects, and how many awards we've given. So I come to this image, which is, shows us how it has worked. So at the beginning, the same steering committee, they chose, but they said that we're going to have $500,000 as, uh, as an award for five projects. So the jury went through it. But the jury, during their deliberations, and we had people like um, Kenzo Tange, Giancarlo Di Carlo, etc. These group of people on the first jury, they came and said, "No, no, we don't agree with five projects. We want to give 15 awards." <laughs> so Hassan Odin Khan. Then uh, this is a story which is uh, Hassan. Is, unfortunately, he's not here. He's traveling. In fact, he was here. Uh, he went. He calls his highness and says that, "Ah, uh, we have told them five projects. They've got 15 projects." And his answer was. It's fine with me. If they decide on 15 projects, it's going to be 15 projects. The reasoning that they had the jury was that at those days, the, it was very new. And they could not find five projects which represent the diversity of the Muslim world of those days, and also the different types of architecture. Now, what is very important on the, historically, which was just not always explained, that the impact was that uh, in 1970s, when I was going to school for architecture, all the architecture journals, you would rarely see an article on slum upgrading, on engineering, these on restoration and conservation. Those were specialized. Conservation was archaeologists' work. Um, slum upgrading, maybe John Turner would write one article in AD. It was a very small article with nothing. All of a sudden, the jury they recognized slump, a huge slump upgrading projects in Hong Kong, in, in, uh, in uh, Indonesia. They had the water towers in Kuwait, which is just infrastructure, which was not. They had restoration projects. So all of a sudden, with a very good system that they established the first award, that they went to very good PR people who they put, and it was new, so it went to all architecture journals. And all of a sudden, Architecture record, review, domus, everyone, they had all these projects. And they were so unusual those days because people had not seen such grouping. The grouping is very important because you're not coming and talking about very, something specific. These projects all together are representing architecture and the status of the role of architecture in our world. So this later by time it became smaller and smaller and smaller. Now we've got five or six. Uh, this I don't know if you can see. So that's how it's around the world, etc. numbers are not important. Uh, beside, then, exceptionally, which I've done only four times, for four people, the, the, there was a decision to make a chairman's award. This is to recognize one person. So the first was given to Hassan Fatin, and then to Rifa Chatterjee, Jeffrey Bawa, and Oleg Rabar. These are the only four people during the past 40 years that have received the chairman's award. The chairman's award does not go through the jury. It is the chairman, the steering committee decided. This is the structure that those people created. So um, it's governed by a steering committee, which is chaired by His Highness. The rest of the steering committee, every two or three cycles, they change uh, the people. These are the people that uh, they're coming from. They're architects, they're academics, they're sociologists, historians of, of different, and they are trying to see to set the parameters, what are, what's more, most, the most important issues of today. That's their role. Or if a seminar, their themes, they will just work on that. Then they, uh, we have got a network of some around 800,000 people around the world that we call them nominators. They are the people who send us projects, they nominate projects. Um, and then the steering committee uh, chooses an independent master jury. And the, it is the role of the master jury to do the projects. Then we have got one other uh, level, which is the on-site review, which was introduced to the award in 1980. And it was, it's very, very unique. Now maybe another couple of other projects, that, uh, awards they have, uh, they're doing that. But it was, that is one of the main issues. We've got a number of people around sitting here that they have been on the review team. And the review team is that we send someone to see the shortlisted projects and go, do an analysis of the project, make a report, 
of the build that project. You, we never send someone from the same country, so it's not revised. And these people make those very standard um, uh, research on the project, which are each of them the take with what we call the review, technical review reports. They are very good in just knowing the projects. They have got, ba they've got, uh, how you say, academically also, they can be some of importance. But what is more important is that those people have to come to the jury and explain the project. So I will go and explain that when I'm doing the thing. And then at the end is the award office, which uh, when I joined the award, we were 25, and today we are three. So that's how it works. But you know, we've got three and a half because Shiraz helped me a lot. <laughs> so I always use this name dropping slide. <laughs> Why? Because if, when you go through these names, you can see that though whoever has had, was important, had a role in architecture in the past 50 years, in, as a member of the steering committee or member of the jury, I'm not, I have not put the names of the um, winners, etc. just those people, they cover the whole architecture the discourse of the past 50 years. So the other, other thing is that this award was not an award which was created for those countries, developing countries, nice people there, and we internationally, the international discourse is out of it. No, it has been, had the involvement of all the people who even their area, that was not the area, those countries were not their area. Um, one day, it was, this is something which Peter Eisenman was saying that, Peter Eisenman said that they asked him, how come you work with the Arkham Award for Architecture? Why did you go to them? And he said, well, I was called by Frank Gehry, who, who he was on the jury. He called me, when he called me, come, this you will learn a lot. I, did, I believed in him. And Frank Gehry came because uh, Charles Moore called him and told him, you come because you will learn something. This is very important. So when I, when we come to choosing the jury members, usually I come to them and say, listen, it's going to be five, six days, but you will <coughs> certainly learn something. And I've never had someone who's been complaining about that. Um, besides the, as I was explaining, that we have got these uh, ceremonies and seminars, which these ceremonies and seminars are very important to have an impact. Influencing is there. Uh, Sibel was there for this uh, 1983 in, uh, in uh, Istanbul. For the first time, they opened the Top Coffee Palace for a, an event. Mm -hmm. And the president of Turkey came from Ankara there. What that means? That means that you're bringing architecture to the, the attention of the people. Because when the president of a country, the king of a country, they come to an event, that subject becomes important. So in newspapers for the, all, all other people, you don't usually talk about architecture. Architecture is not a subject which is to talk about. But when these occasions come, it becomes public. It becomes goes right to the different levels of the society. Um, and also we've had it in different places, wonderful, etc. So then we have also had seminars. Seminars have played uh, in the early, especially in the early days, they played a very important role. So because they brought different people who were talking about the, um, about the subject, for example, this was in Cairo, we were talking about expanding metropolis, and we had, each of these created the proceedings. In 1980s, there were no, not many publications and books about any <coughs> subject which it was uh, is, is the Muslim world. And the series of, which were published and were sent for free to all universities, uh, were the proceedings of, of these seminars, have played an important role for the people in the field. So uh, not only we have the seminars, we just go around working with other institutions. And the whole thing is that you have to be, uh, around the world there are different, uh, different group of people, diff different audiences. And how you can have the impact on each of them is very important. That's our role, what we do every year. And we've got these exhibitions, etc. Also, we've had publications. We've got 14, uh, besides the, the award books that uh, we published every three years, uh, uh, we have got also the proceeding of the seminars, etc. that we do. Uh, now, this is something which those one billion which I put up there, it's not something which I've made up myself. We, we have seen that the award gets a huge amount of attention 
in the media. Celebration is always interesting for the media. Media picks up. But what is important, it goes, it has a, it is an attractive story. These stories are very interesting. In uh, 19, it was 2007, I think, yeah, we had the films, and BBC World, they chose, and they used these films as a four programs, half an hour each, and then these films, these documentaries, were shown on the planes, on the aeroplane, because, you know, it goes, documentaries have got their own life. And have, so we have been reaching a lot of people around the world in different cities. This, so now I'm going to go about this 2019. Just go through a cycle. I would just put it in the way that how it would work. Because what was what was saying that the structure is important, how deep the work is. So we have got a steering committee. Some people you might know here. These are, we call them the wise men. I don't know how wise they are. But anyway, they help <laughs> us in creating those and establishing this for each cycle, those parameters. Well, one of the main roles is also is that they uh, write a brief to the uh, to the jury, which that brief is published in our books, and that brief itself it explains the uh, realities of our time. That was what I was talking about, the relevance, which is very important. So they choose another group, uh, which are again we've got here sitting here, and amongst them and some. And so these are the steering committee members who were, we came to for the, they served on this cycle. The cycle is a three years, it's every three years. And it, it takes a long time to do this. It's not something you can, you can do it in one year. Because we've got the nomination, the documentation, we've got the jury meetings, the reviews, the shortlist announcement, etc., etc. That is how it works. And so they go, we have this cycle, we have 380 projects. So this jury will receive the 380 projects. These are the 380 projects which are eligible, they've been documented, we've got enough material for them, for the, uh, the jury members to, ab to be able to make a short list of 20 projects. So this takes them three days of work, they receive the information before, and then, and I try to be very neutral, but sometimes I push certain things. Is that true, Ali? <laughs> <laughs> right. and they chose 20 projects. These 20 projects were just later around the, this we see the different countries. They went and people go there, they, these are the on-site reviewers. They go and spend three, four days on, the, on, uh, on each site, interviewing the architects, the clients, the users, the other peers, the other different people, and they have to come back with the report. And when, when they come back, they have to, to the, come back to the jury and uh, explain. In the meanwhile, once the these people have finished their work, they're not on, in the, on the site any, anymore. We announce the shortlist 20 days before the jury meetings. The reason is that if anyone else has got any objection or some information, additional information which has to be given, but through social media we'll, have to, we'll know about it. Because before, when we were, we were not announcing them, there were some problems sometimes because Although someone goes there, someone else would come and say, I've done this project or not. We had one case which was an interesting project, an interesting case um, six years ago. It was a project in Lebanon. And the documentation, etc., was fantastic. And everybody believed, we believed, and all the jury and even work. It, they looked really nice. And these days, unfortunately, with all these uh, computer systems, etc., it's very difficult to understand between the reality and the. Um, Whatever is just in there. So when when I called this, uh, uh, I saw I wrote a letter to the architect saying your project has been shortlisted. So I called a friend in uh, AUB and I said, by the way, so and so is going to come and see the project. She said, which project? I said the project, those pods which are on the water. He said, there's not such a thing at all. I said, but we have got all the things. He said, no, no. So I said, fine. So anyway, he went there. He saw there's nothing. And by the day that we announced them. This gentleman calls me. First, no. First, I received from all my Lebanese friends uh, calls. How, how come Farouk, this guy is very angry, his project is not there? I said, which project? The project was not been there at all. So he called me and says, I will sue you if by tomorrow at 12 o'clock you don't put my project amongst the projects as well, I will sue you. I said, are you suing me where? <laughs> On what basis? So in order to, that was the reason, because the project was not there, so we not did not include it at the end. So we've got this timing for the public also to, to tell us. Then 
we have the jury members. They come and sit together and they look. Now, what is very important is these people who have seen the project, the, the reporters, on-site reviewers, they have to come and explain the project in person. That is very important because of two reasons. One is, it doesn't matter who you are, what's your academic background or whatever you are. Writing an objective report is not easy. You always are opinionated. You think there's something good, or maybe you forget certain things. But when you come and present it yourself to the jury, the jury might ask questions that you had forgotten to write, so you can immediately answer them to those questions. Or if you're too against the project or too uh, for the project, it will be in those presentations that will be sent by the jury members. We have had cases before that one jury, uh, one uh, uh, reviewer was just trying hard to kill two projects for some other reasons, with all the good reasons. But the jury, by examining her, they, thought, they by cross-examining, found out the reality was very different. So what they do, they, they come and they choose the one million dollar award is given by these projects. Uh, once it, it's given, this is what we do. We have to go and bring our trumpets, go somewhere and do the announcement of the project. This is a, a ceremony. Uh, this time was in Kazan. I was very happy when we went to Kazan this time. Uh, most of our guests did not have any idea where they're going, what they're going to see, what part of the world they are. It was so different to their expectations of people. Because Kazan is a part of, the, the, as you know, Nasser can explain to you, is the north, furthest north eastern part of the world which has become Muslim. And one important thing about it is that this land, they did not become Muslim by force. They sent uh, someone to, uh, to uh, someone, to, uh, they asked for an envoy from Baghdad to come in there. And what is interesting, they've been living in coexistence. So here you've got the church and the the church and the, uh, uh, the uh, mosque and the Soviet tower, etc. all of them, they go together in a very harmonious way. So these are these kind of ceremonies that we have. So all these people, they come and they get the awards. So, but still, our work is not finished. So what we have to do is go back. We have, first of all, we have a seminar which we discuss the issues with the, these right now where they are. But after that, we go back to each of these projects and celebrate with the people. Because what I explained is no project is worth of the one or two people who are coming to the award ceremony. You want to be known as it's, it's a, a part of a human being. You, it's very important that your mother-in-law and your neighbors and all the people, they know that you have achieved something. Secondly, there's so many people who work for a project. This is this, the people, that are, I mean, all the architects and all the uh, people who are working for this one project, they come and each of them, they get this, uh, the letter of recommendation, commendation, uh, etc. in the ceremony. So again, the ceremony afterwards goes to each of these countries and it just continues. And not only that, we just go there. This is, I like, like this project, but this is a school. So not only the people who came to see this uh, in Dhaka were present during the ceremony, the, that event, the next day when I went there, they all came and they visited. So the project has been now, uh, they came there, and now they in this school, they have, they have become volunteers to go and work in that school. <laughs> that was very <laughs> interesting for me. Now, now I'm going to go through the projects uh, one by one. These six projects were chosen by the jury. Although uh, Ali remembers, I was keep, kept telling the jury members, can you please not choose only cute projects? It's a project which should look a little bit more modern because we've had, so you, sometimes there's this tendency that sometimes the projects are always nice projects. So I always would want to try something, find something that's much more pro provocative. Anyway, so we've got the six projects. Are, this is a project, a building in uh, Senegal. In Senegal, they've got these schools that they want to make them in the intermediate cities, which is bef uh, instead of having all the people going to the capital, so they have a university, a kind of a university, uh, which is in a city far from the capital. But they had uh, to build some classrooms. 
And here, with a very ingenious way, that it's only introducing these three, um, three um, I'm sorry, forms to make those bricks. They have been trying to cover the whole building on one side with the shadow that you have at this um, opening, and the other side it's all covered with this space, which I don't know if you see that. And also with this area that they're catching all the water, it's a very sustainable. So this project is very important. They say that although that in the inside, in the interiors, as you can see, you can see few air conditioning, but in fact it works very well. They say something like five degrees or more difference between exteriors and interiors. So the usage of AC is very minimal. That, uh, on the very far left, you can see that space which is kept between the building, the classrooms, and that uh, screen. And that is what, uh, how it works, and this is uh, at the front of it. These are the classrooms, there are some AC, very few that they work. So, what is the importance of these projects? It's not only the project architecture is important, it gives a lesson of how to build in harsh climates, which is one of these. And it was all the architecture students, all the people who work on these kind of projects. But how to make it more intelligent? How you make it somehow that it can be repeated and replicated somewhere else? And this is some, a project which is done. And also, they have created a space for education for the people who have better, much better quality than the, uh, the similar uh, buildings in the campus. So the students who are going there will be very proud of going to something which makes it more um, modern or more, I call it, better as an establishment than the schools in Dhaka. The second product is the rehabilitation of Mohara. I find this project extremely important for a number of reasons. It is the way, the, pr pr the process of this project. Mohara is the older part of Bahrain. Um, it, Manama is the capital now, but before it's Mohara. Uh, it is an old area for which uh, there was a pearl industry was there, but little by little by the, when the new capital was created in Manama, people moved. And so when the people usually move in these cities, these old people who live there are immigrants. When you walk there, sometimes funny, you see all the um, these ads on the wall, it's written in Hindi or in English, not even Arabic. So because that's how they move. So with the, with the vision of one person, who she was at the time the Minister of Culture, she started a series of restoration works as an initiative, personal initiative. And she went through very difficult times as well within her own country. Once Nasser and I were there to give a talk in 2008, I don't know, seven, whatever. So we went there, we saw there was no one. Because that day she was sacked from the minister, being a minister. Again, she became a minister. But she's so forceful that they changed the ministry into a director, so she would not attend the, 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 the uh, cabinet of the ministry. But what is important here is that not only they started rehabilitating the sort of, uh, buildings, they were not afraid at all, she was not, to become that very, um, how do you say, this conventional way of doing restoration in old, in, uh, uh, um, old uh, cities. Um, we have got the Venice Charter and the Athens Charter, etc. And all the whatever they call it now, UNESCO. It's very funny when they say they talk about UNESCO. I don't know exactly what means UNESCO. But they are, people are censoring themselves and repeating certain things which have even never existed to do the conservation work in all cities. Here they've been very boldly doing, bringing new elements into the project, which it works very well. One of the important things that they did was that to create this is, I think, in the, there's a plan there, they call it the pearl route. It means from one end of the island to the other, they have, they have restored the number of buildings and they made a way to walk. And when you walk, first of all, cities change. Public space in, in historic cities did not have, did not exist sometimes. It was not the same usage, you don't need them. Now, they have here, they've created 16 small plots as um, gardens, as uh, public spaces, 
I did with Dave by, by introducing these lamps that you can see, which look like a pearl, very modern, very striking. You can, when you walk, you will get, you will not get thrust. You can just go around from one uh, building to the other, from one end to the other. Uh, they have created with these uh, very sometimes new uh, havens, uh, the very good uh, uh, new concrete work, etc. It has become really vibrant. The city. Uh, slides are, uh, the slides are small, so you not understand anything. That's the reason. Don't think about these images. So you have to go and look at the books and the uh, films later. For example, this pavilion you can see on the right. This was done as a pavilion. It was built for the Milano Expo. And it was designed from the very beginning that it was dismantled from in Milano and was brought back and put on one plot. And it works now. And it works perfectly well, physically perfectly well. They got, for, the, for example, the, the people. There were two families who were performing music in the neighborhood. So they've created these spaces that during the so during the day when they're performing, it closes. They don't. Uh, they they just practice inside. But when they have to, uh, they have concerts. They open it up and it becomes a public space around it. Uh, it is. I mean, it's a very interesting project. The other project for me is the important of the last project is that this is the first time that we've had an award from the United Arab Emirates, UAE. UAE is something which you've discussed a lot. What it means in architecture, how it's been done and it's been done all by others. For the first time, this is the two architects who did this project are the first graduates. This, they are the Emirati graduates of the uh, School of Architecture in Sharjah. So that, for me, was very important. To give this um, message that it's not only those people coming from outside, especially in that area, that they only see the importance of the people who have been graduated, the, the people who have been uh, for, uh, foreign uh, Companies working, but the project has got another important thing. There was a piece of this. This area became a, a, a wasteland, and this wasteland, which later became the wetland, it was all the thing report. So they cleaned it up instead of making a, a decision. The rural, rural decision was instead of making they could have made it into a um, shopping mall because it's a very prime land. Amongst you. They made it into this um, big lake, and they. <coughs> had asked these architects to do this interpretation system, system, which is an aviary. You can see the children come. Every day the children come. It's so well uh, attended by all the children. Uh, it is, so they have, the architect that decided to sunk in the building. You don't, don't see anything from outside. You only go and see inside. It's got a very small architectural trick that they've played by tilting these, uh, these windows. So because they are tilted, the birds who are in the cages outside, they do not see the children because it's a mirror. But from the children from inside can see them. So they've created this relationship between the children and the, the environment, which is very, so the children go on one side and they come the other, and that's what they can see. And this lake, around the lake, there is a number of spots that people can go and watch the birds come. Now, by, in the past few years, the migrant birds who were going from Africa to Siberia, they were not stopping here anymore. Now they started stopping in the way. Well, the other things also happened because these are the same migrant birds which were after, uh, after the uh, Sharjah, etc. They would go through Syria uh, to go back. And because of the air flights and airlines, they, they have changed their, their, their path. There's one artist who's done the very interesting work on that. So this is how the, the environment looks like. Um, the other project is a project which we've probably seen, the Palestinian Museum. The Palestinian Museum is done by Henry Peng, and you know them, Shimon, uh, uh, etc. They uh, did a project which was done in Birzeit. Birzeit University, they gave a land to them to be <coughs> the Palestinian Museum. Now, don't forget that this museum is not, Palestinian Museum is a very political action as well. It was supported by people from uh, outside, and there are not that many objects in the museum. It's not a usual museum with objects. It's got a series of spaces to, to present different uh, exhibitions, but the landscaping here plays an extremely important role. Because they came, 
and have this, this cascaded landscape that you can see here. This, these are the interiors. Um, the, they brought all the plants of Palestine. So all the species which exist in Palestine were studied and they are used in this landscape. So this is the whole thing to remember, the people remember this is something you cannot take from us. And that was the, the, the important message there. Uh, actually, just uh, as you can follow projects, these are the same architects who are doing the Grand uh, Museum of Cairo. And they were trying to have the same cladding system. I mean, if you have the time to go and look at them, it's a very interesting cladding system that they've, uh, uh, they've brought here, and they have got, they found very good contractors to do that. And in Cairo, they wouldn't let them to do it. So it's becoming a terrible mess in Cairo. It will be inaugurated in, in October, I think. Uh, the, this other project, which is going to talk about scale and influence and how can have scale. In the course of five years, in Tatarstan, by a program that, although it was coming from the president's program, they have created 380 parks. They have rehabilitated or created these parks. <coughs> the whole thing started with a story. The story of, that you can see in these two photos. There was a famous willow tree that in Kazan, that people traditionally, especially the lovers, used to go and you know, propose to each other for marriage, etc. So a developer just cuts the tree. They cut the tree, and all the people of the city, they do a protest. They go there as a manifestation. And that becomes that they were, claim, they were asking, they were claiming to have public spaces. And they brought someone who she was, uh, before working uh, uh, in Moscow, and had done the Gorky Park in Moscow. And she's a very good organizer, very young. She, she's 28 now. She was 23 when she started a project, being a charter project. And they started working with the, uh, with the different people. The projects are in different scales. But you, you don't should not be very attentive that you know how the landscaping is done, etc. First of all, they're both very young people. In Tatarstan, and like Russia, the young, very young people have got very big responsibilities. That's something which we've learned there and was very interesting. So they gave them a lot of these parks. The, these are the, 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 the different projects they've done. And they, have, they had to work with the mayors, the municipal people in each of these. So that dialogue and that conversation, how you can uh, change the mindset of these ex-Soviet uh, uh, people who are running these companies, how to make them that they will understand that it is for their benefit. With very small amount of uh, investment, they can have something in, this, in the city which will help them to become to be seen more uh, productive. Also, they have uh, created work for small companies, more making these street furniture, <laughs> etc. So, and these public areas are extremely well, uh, well used. Having in mind that only five, five, four months a year it can be used as this, because the rest of the year is under <laughs> snow. So they had to create these parks that can be capable of being working during the snow time as well. The last project, which is uh, one of the favorites of Ed, wherever you go, is called the Arcadia is a floating school. Now, usually, uh, to have an experiment, it's all done by young people who they have no reputation. They take the risk, they do something which is prototype, innovative, etc. Because if it fails, it fails. If it doesn't fail, well, then they will become famous. Here, an architect of a certain age took a high, high risk. Uh, the story has got a very interesting thing. A lady who was a, t a teacher in London for many years, Bangladeshi lady, she, keep, she brings all the her pension funds and she wanted to create a school in, in Dhaka, near Dhaka. She, she goes and buys a land and then calls his nep her nephew, which is the architect, to come and build a school. When he comes back, it's during the flood season, 
they come and see that there's no land, it's only flood. They say, what shall we do? They say, well, we have to build here, because I bought this land, and that's it. <laughs> so this challenge becomes for the architect, that how to build, how to use the land, which the land uh, is, uh, it is uh, every year for three, four months, the water rises up to three meters and go down. So he comes with creating this school, which is, you can see here, you see that the way, the way it comes, this school, uh, which, which has got six elements, as you can see there, in that field. So the water comes all the way around the, the, the school and it floats, this river. That is very usual in Bangladesh. So he uses a very simple technique. The technique is just putting the barrels that you can see, and then on the, on the ground they put these tires, these used tires, so the whole thing sits on the, the whole school, each of the units, but each of the units are separate from the other, so they can float differently. And what he did also, which was very important, this is how the school looks like, sorry, uh, what he did was he also had to use the toilets. So he had a very simple but sophisticated way to create with the septic tank, with the toilets, with that also, that element also can uh, float. And so it was a very, very interesting project, and as I say, high risk for someone who already was a famous architect, and if he had failed here, he would not be hurt any other projects. Now we've got these two books which he came down. Uh, first, we wrote it in Russian, then we translated it, translated it into English in two months. So here it is for the library, there are, there are two copies of it. So every year we try to make the fill of these things. At the same time, if you're interested, we have got one thing. The best way of communicating architecture is films. Books, images, etc. they don't do it. Because it's only with the, with the medium of film that you can understand the space and people. So what we do every year, we send a number of people, the photo uh, filmmakers, that all, on all the 20 projects which were shortlisted, there are two and a half minutes or three minutes films, which are on YouTube channels, so if you've got a chance, you can look at them. Thank you. start by actually asking the audience if you have any question rather than us immediately taking over and perhaps not giving any chance so if there are any questions all right who raised his finger first we were behind. Okay, so we yeah, just, just quickly, have you uh, considered uh, in terms of presenting to the public things like uh, 3D visualizations or virtual reality or any of that because I would give people a sense of being immersed in it. Um, the films work very well. I don't know if you've seen or watched any of those movies. There are because they've got interviews. Uh, it's, it's more, it's, the whole thing is that with, the difference between the award and other architectural projects are it's just the, the, the human part of it. How the building, how the project is seen by people. And we talk about this very important. So visualizing is becomes secondary in that sense. Um, thank you very much for the implicit uh, presentation. And uh, the process is very uh, implicit. I mean, how thorough and has so many uh, uh, aspects of it. However, after all of that, I would like to ask you, to what extent do you think that the final outcome is really out of any fault? And here I'm not asking about fault itself, but I'm asking about uh, how, to what extent do you think that uh, the, the organization as a, as a whole can self-criticize itself? In a sense that, you know, sometimes a group of people might still be um, interested in something, and subjectivity is something important in architecture, but you have already nicely explained how 
you bring different people from different community and so on. But also, uh, despite, the, I mean, after all of that, how do you set to criticize yourself throughout the process, if you are, or if out of your um, um, criteria to set to criticize yourself? Um, I don't know how to put that to criticize yourself. We've got one mechanism which is very interesting, is that the day after the ceremony, we have that seminar. But that seminar gives an occasion for people to discuss and ask questions where we have got the jury members, the steering committee members, and the winners there. So that is the kind of a, the critical, uh, official critical part of it. The rest is that what's important, if we are capable of making people ask questions, that is where it's important. Because, if that would, because the whole thing will not finish. It will be a continuous discussion about the project. We have still have got some time. Project which won an award like two or three cycles ago, and still there are questions about them. They're, they're, they're bringing to new elements. Because you can see this, there's another thing which is very important. The, any architecture project has to be seen time as well. Because it has, it, uh, it acts differently during the time. Certain projects by nature, they're static, they don't change, you know, let's say a museum building, although it's a small change. Some other projects, especially social projects, they do evolve and they change. Sometimes for the be better, sometimes for the worse. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. I have two questions, but maybe I'll ask one now. Um, I was wondering how uh, the award um, puts itself in the context of the geopolitical order of its time. I mean, for instance, this last cycle uh, happened in the context uh, of Trump's Muslim ban, where some some countries from the so-called Muslim world are selected to be othered, while others are doing uh, well in this same geopolitical order. So I was wondering if the award ever thinks of responding uh, to those kinds of uh, shifts in the geopolitical order. Where does it take it? ethical compass, and so I was wondering if this, like the uh, ordering of the, a bunch of uh, selected countries from the Muslim world became an issue in the last time. I don't think that in that sense, politics. first of all, um, if you've got, in politics, the, um, the, uh, the recommendation number one is if you don't agree with someone, if you don't let the person to be like a ping pong, you should not answer. If Trump says something, you should not go and answer immediately because that's the way that you bring yourself to a position to, this is usually happening in, this, uh, in, in politics. Uh, but so we are not responding. But one has, as I said, in the context, all these things with the jury people, when they have nine jury members sitting around the table and there is a certain period of time, they take these things into consideration as well. So some of these areas, for example, uh, today climate change is important. It's quite important. So we can see that in a series of these projects, you've got climate change as an important factor, uh, which has been uh, addressed. Not only, but it has. The school, the, um, the, the wetland, is where, where this change it is, uh, the, these uh, 380 um, uh, parks, the school, university. You see, what, when you look at them, they have got climate change as very important. So you can take, one can look at it from that aspect. Then you can see that how the social <laughs> issues are important. How uh, the, the system which works, and it, again, the project in Tataristan is very important. The way it is, that how that system works. It's not a system that can work in America. See what I mean? That system of how you bring the people. Doing that in such a short period of time is very important. But I, I'm not sure, I, mean, I don't say that, you know, they sit down and say, okay, how can we, uh, we uh, respond to Trump? Yeah, I, I will follow on from Esra. And since I was mentioned in the beginning for that early critique of the award, first of all, I want to thank all, everyone involved for this cycle. I mean, the book is beautiful, and the six projects are really, really very interesting. Each one has a different story. But uh, what I'm noticing uh, compared to those earlier cycles is, you know, in, in the earlier cycles, there was this pluralism. There was a lot of different things. There would be the usual office tower by SOM in the Gulf, and then there would be the mud brick uh, mosque in Mali.
I mean, you know, it, it, it was all over the place. <coughs> and uh, that pluralism also went hand in hand, I think, with a uh, sort of reluctance to be political in a very overt sense. Uh, whereas now what I'm seeing is that uh, there is this uh, more focusing or coherence around these issues, which I can sum up as social concern, sustainability, uh, public space, you know, all of these, which, as Nasser said, are uh, bringing the awards really into the larger discourse of architecture rather than making it a, uh, you know, a sort of niche Islamic thing. You know. So, uh, but that I also find uh, by engaging with those, uh, it is implicitly taking, I think, slowly, and I'm very happy about this, political position as well. And so the, the, the question that, ca that can only come after that is, will, will that political position be more explicit and more effective? Because, because sorry, you said that one of the uh, purposes as it was at the inception in 1977 was influence the dynamics of physical change in the Islamic societies. I mean, as we know, many of these societies are now governed by autocrats who are really into uh, all sorts of destruction of the environment and this and that. So this is all nice and wonderful, but I think the next step has to be the, 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 There are two things, is, you know, uh, for the, uh, three cycles ago, uh, we decided to announce the short list of projects, because before that, we'd never announce a short list. So today, <coughs> as we're packaging 20 projects, and out of these 20, five, six are the winners, so when you look at the older projects, some other ones in the shortlist do complement, uh, uh, how we say this, approach to diversity and pluralism, in a way. Uh, but sometimes, it, I mean, we've had, we look at the projects in, in all the cycles. We have, we were addressing a lot of issues like technology, like, uh, you know, these are very important issues. And with the, I would have loved to have an, in the middle maybe a skyscraper, but at the same time, when the projects come to the jury, <coughs> look at it, the jury have looked at it, they could not find something exceptional. Because what is important with the awards is to give something which goes, it is exceptional in its, its own genre. So that is what, the, in this time, for example, they could not find something which is the address that. But my, I'm sorry, my point was not that, I'm actually happy that there isn't that many different kind of no, well, that, that's because what your I'm, message I'm is stronger now around those issues yeah. of but sustainability and social concern. That's a good thing. Last question, Reza. Um, hi, I was kind of, it goes with the two questions previously asked, but um, which is in regards to the um, bouts of turbulence or political upheaval going on in certain countries, um, and not so much as to how that um, kind of shapes what the steering committee is looking for, but I'm more curious as to, like for example, the in the first cycle, the renovation of Hajj de Behesh and Ali Ghapu and Chelu Sutun, how um, that kind of what the government's uh, take on that is, if that makes sense. Like, how is one? <coughs> is it does it limit? Are certain uh, projects not able to make it to the nomination or see forward because um, of yeah the government infliction? No, because so first of all, we received many projects. We had 380 projects, and um, it's that's why that and, and it comes. They're all there. There's no reason that why projects are not there. But for example, uh, as you mentioned, the world changes. Mm. Right now, in the old days, in the 1980s, conservation was seen as objects, and then today we're only talking about 
area conservation. Mm -hmm. Which is because area conservation was not a, at all the subject those years. Actually, I was in, in Cairo, Nasser, um, last week, and the project, you remember the project which is uh, uh, done by the Germans? They, they, mm -hmm. It was one of the very first uh, which they award, they got an award, that the Germans, the they went into a district, they did five buildings. Mm -hmm. By doing the five buildings, Together, it became a dis area conversation, but it was not seen as, from the beginning, an area con con uh, conversation, conservation. So that is interesting that how, with the with time, uh, these projects uh, change, and the way that people appreciate them is changing. Because the conservation today, no, nobody looks at the conservation, this is done time. How good you can reuse, adaptive reuse has become more important. And a bit competitive because that project that he's speaking about was called Dar Kermis, which actually means the Crimson Alleyway. And then the Afghan uh, organization took over Dar al Ahmar, the red <laughs> alleyway. It's like <laughs> removing colors. So, um, with all of these questions and comments, perhaps we'll start with you, Guru. Yeah, I, I agree uh, with Dr. Uh, Simad that. Um, it's a very good list of um, finalists, and in a way, this kind of new unity that seems to be uh, created by making architecture as an instrument uh, for change, uh, both social but uh, also for ecological and uh, environmental matters that uh, concern everybody uh, nowadays. In a way, I wonder uh, if that might mean that uh, sort of projects in the future become, or winners become predictable somehow. Because uh, in a way, therefore, certain projects will not maybe be nominated because uh, it will be understood that uh, this award is a different award, architecture with a message, uh, which I totally, uh, it means its importance, but uh, being a commentator, I should also uh, raise some questions about the implications for the future, especially because the uh, award has clearly moved away from its initial uh, criteria, and so on. It seems almost that I mean, it can be understood as a kind of anti-monument for anti-architect. Mm. kind of uh, idea behind it, although that's not the starting point. Uh, it, it kind of, uh, I was more involved in the previous uh, award and there too I sensed this. And uh, it's maybe also part of a broader trend among schools of architecture, like the GST for example, where so Architecture seems to have like an envy of conceptual art or um, some, mm -hmm. in some way kind of moving away uh, from history, from um, kind of what it means that a project will be maybe 50 years from now. So these are the kinds of questions that uh, I would like to raise. Where, where is the place of history? What are the criteria of design quality once you determine that a project has a very good message and a very good uh, role to play. Um. Don't answer. This is this technique that you mentioned in the joke at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, just a, a kind of a, a, a comment to say that we actually use these volumes, and as an example, uh, last semester uh, our seminar was meeting right at the time of the award, and being at the award, we said uh, the jury identified 20 shortlisted and selected six. But the charge to the class was the jury failed to find one outstanding project. Oh. Which one was it? <laughs> and so during the meetings that we had over there, the class, the seminar, was going over the 16 other, 15 others, and then emailed at the time of the awards, and, no, I didn't 
mention it publicly, I did tell the shortlisted projects, you know, you were selected uh, by our <laughs> seminar to be added to the finalist list. But it helps students to actually go through the process that the jury did to ask what should be premiated, what should be raised up, and that whole intellectual process is extraordinarily creative and, and productive. Um, just this morning, also in another seminar, we said, where do you look for outstanding projects? In our field, uh, architecture, environmental design broadly, is very poorly indexed. So if you're using searches in libraries and the architectural historians and scientists and engineers have superb libraries indexing you know, what ideas are outstanding. But in architectural design, it's a very poorly indexed field. And this is one index that they can go to ArchNet, get all the materials, background materials, as well as uh, now a large corpus of projects that are worthy of close study. So it's become an extraordinary resource. And the question I have for you, or for, for the proposal, really, is that the quality of life, I was so glad to see that it was mentioned at the very beginning of the award. And if you go through almost every essay here, it's mentioned. But if you ask, what does it mean? Uh, it's rarely elaborated in great depth. And yet the Alcon Development Network has a quality of life unit. Uh, and when they visited last year, we had this great conversation. That they said, we said, well, how do you assess the impact of the built environment projects in the network on the quality of life of uh, the people and places affected? They said, well, we, really, we have trouble with that. We don't know how to evaluate architectural interventions. And conversely, when we look at the architectural discourse, we don't see the elaboration with the rigor in socioeconomic, cultural, political terms that the quality of life unit can do in social scientific ways. It seems like there's enormous opportunity uh, for a advance in what this quality of life has meant, does mean, can mean. And so I put that out to you as a query for future awards that there's an extraordinary frontier in the very roots of what your award has identified. So the other part that you're not going to answer as well, that just a little bit of comments. Um, and I would like to perhaps address the questions that were asking about the political or the message aspect of the award. And this is more of sort of like witnessing the development of the award in the last 35 years than just this final cycle. Um, one thing that one notices about how the award is structured is that in and by itself is trying to mitigate the political and diplomatic aspect of the fact that it's an award established by the Arachan who has a political position in the world and a mission in the world. And the fact that it is stratified and that there is a steering committee and a jury and a technical reviewer means that the subjectivity that we talked about is again mitigated by the fact that there are so many players and so many levels that are deciding ultimately which project is going to be awarded. So one recognizes the fact that exactly as Ezra and Sibel and ultimately Gulru is asking about um, if there is a political motivation in the directionality of the award and if that is articulated it seems to me that it is not really articulated and the subjectivity is lessened by the fact that there are so many actors <coughs> and that have so many functions within ultimately reaching the list of the projects to be awarded. But um, there is the factor of time. What we have now is 50 years of experience and 50 years of maturity of an award that is now not really shying away from somehow revealing the interests that ultimately need to motivate architecture outside of the uh, canonical um, celebration of architecture as object. The, I mean, the comparison between 
Yeah, an Award and other prestigious and heavily paid awards immediately shows that the monument is celebrated by the likes of the Riva and the Pritzker and the celebration of the individual genius, whereas the Aachen Award is again uh, meditating against that. And to me, this is a very important role that the award is playing. First of all, the architect is not made into a demigod in the Aachen Award. And I don't know if the architects like that or not, but that's the reality <laughs> of life. And they should somehow accept it. And that they should start seeing themselves as team players, that there are a lot of people that are involved in it, the patrons, the builders, and so on. And the second thing is the themes that have been noted. These are actually political themes, ultimately. Not political in the level that Sivan and I would like to see, and probably that would be impossible, given the fact that the Khan is a political actor in the world, so there has to be some sort of a limit in there. But addressing environmental change, addressing scarcity of material, addressing flood in a country that loses so many people every year. And actually, I mean, going back, even in, in the selection of religious buildings, selecting religious buildings that wouldn't be celebrated otherwise. There used to be this very famous mosque in Pakistan that so many people objected to it. And I felt that was actually a beautiful message to say, why are you objecting to it? This is what the monument is for the people that were building it. So to me, despite the fact that I probably share the critique of Ezra and of Sibel, but I find the Aachen Award within the world to have done the best thing that they could have done, given the limitations of who is sponsoring it, what is the relationship of the patron to the rest of the world, and, as a matter of fact, actually, how is the architectural profession itself reacting to an award that is saying, I'm going to celebrate a part of the world that you usually overlook and usually do not include. And pushing towards that inclusion has been one of the major achievements of the yeah, and work. Your comments, then. Now, um, this, uh, we have got this mechanism with the award that's uh, from, the, from something back 15, 10 years ago it started. That uh, before, at the very early days, the nomination process was uh, people would send projects because there was less information. Today, you just Google anything, anything comes up in a way. So some people also, or nominators, they say they tend not to send projects because they say, well, someone else will send it. So we as an office, because we, are, we have to be at the same time proactive, and at the same time we don't want to ourselves to be the people who are looking for projects. So what we have done as a kind of a, a, a um, kind of a process to, um, to be, make sure that we've got everything, besides the people's nominating projects, we ourselves, we identify projects. And then those projects we've identified, and we make sure that we've got in all categories. Then we send those projects to the nominators in the field, and we ask them if they would endorse it or not. We will not automatically do put it in the in, put it in the nominations. Uh, so that's why we're trying to make sure that the jury, when they see the 300, 400 projects, these three, 400 projects are somehow comprehensive. And as I said, we have got so many things because, you know, it's important to have, uh, what is very important is, what are the ones which are innovative? Innovation is very important. And that is something because certain things are done and repeated. Our big, especially the big architecture project, they're the same things, there's nothing new about it. The only thing is how you can find a story with all of each of these projects. And that is what makes it different. And that makes it that people pay more attention to it. Now, having said that, in the past, every cycle, people come to us and say that we, we've seen projects through the award that we have never seen it in other contexts, have come to attention of the people. And that is something that I think is a force of the award. It's a force of the award that is the way that we are connecting and the networks that we've created, which is not the same networks. We, we have, the award has got a, a difference with other institutions because uh, because I've been 
as you said, for such a long time in this field. Uh, academics, they've got their own co connections. They read the same books, the same, the same, same journals, the same internet to get together. The practicing architects, they're, they're totally in another world. They're totally somehow, but they've got their own networks, etc. And then you've got students who have seen the things differently as well. And then you've got the international organizations, which they are, again, when you go to the old realm of UN Habitat, you, all of these, they are, again, in a totally different uh, world. So we have been able to go with, to somehow flirt with all of them, in a way, using the word flirting. Um, and that has been a, a concept which is, uh, which I think has helped us to be able to bring different things to the attention of different parties. Maybe this is something which uh, is, and also don't forget one thing, we are a very small number of people. So that is also if we were, you know, we don't have, we have a small mission, so, and we try hard to do only what we have to do. Do it correctly, finish it, and then take it around and make discussions. The more discussions we can make, the more, uh, I think, successful we are. Are there any burning questions? I like the burning ones. There's one. Yes. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Um, and I agree with everything you've said. There's one thing, you know, it's all about, it's very constructive, but there is so much con so much destructure going on. You know, think about Syria, whole towns, communities being uprooted, people living in these absolutely appalling tent cities under Un inhumane conditions. How does how does the award or how does the organisation behind the award take account of that? Um, post disaster, post conflict, because there's so many words for these. These are elements that there are not a lot of people are working on. That uh, finding projects, which, for example, we have in the if you go to the different cycles of the award, we have, we have had uh, projects with dealing with uh, uh, post-disaster, post-conflict. We had in, in, in Lebanon, for these camps, we had for the floods, etc. First of all, there are not that many fantastic projects which are exceptional, which is done, because we're not talking about recognizing the destruction is not our job. This is, this is not the goal. What our, our job is that who has found a solution for a small project in that contract? If that, that is something that has to be celebrated, that is our job, to make sure that we point out of a, a good project which has been done. Um, we have, as I said, we have had, sometimes, not in a nice, uh, sometimes it's critical. Um, there's one famous architect, which I th and there's a small note, uh, something has been published recently, I, I, I hasn't come back to me <coughs> saying, criticizing me, because I sent in that publication, because we sent them some people. Some, a famous architect did a project for uh, uh, post tsunami or something in, in Sri Lanka. So the project was fantastic architecturally. But the, the way that they were planned, they did not work at all. So we can see that sometimes, and that is our job. It was technically reviewed, it was published, the project, but the project did not win because these post-conflict post or post-disaster projects, whatever you call them, uh, for us it's very important, but we haven't found any good example. What we found was a famous architect who did it, and he did it all wrong at the end. But it's a very important thing to do. So anyway, if these projects exist, but we only look at them afterwards if they're if you know any of them, please, see one of my pieces. If you know any projects that you think are, could be considered, please send them. There's one thing I want to add is that we receive, we take, we also as an institution take risks. In 1995, we received a nomination from a nominator calling the reforestation of the Middle East Technical University in Ankara. So, a reforestation is an architecture project. So first of the 
first act is that to take the research, are we going to present this to the jury or not? Because technically, is it a project? But it's not a project. So our decision was that we would present it to the jury, the reforestation, and see how they can consider it. And funnily enough, the project was shortlisted, and it became a winner. And it became a winner in 1995, much, much earlier than this whole thing of the environmental issues. And the, re, the way that the, that jury framed it, that how by creating these um, green areas, you can contain spaces, not only having a lung, but also having an impact on the way that the encroachments work, the, thing that the way that the cities are working, etc. So it is, these are the areas that we really would like people, that if they see anything that they think that this can also be considered as architecture to present it to us. Because it, that is how we can continue. Like this, I'm very happy with this parks project. And it's, it's, it opens a lot of questions, a lot of areas to discuss about it. Well, uh, before we let you go, uh, you've seen that beautiful posters. We have uh, many copies of it. Those of you who have access to boards or places where you can hang them. We have many of them here. Please come and take as many as you wish. Um, and um, if you like our uh, activities, the next is on March 16th. It's going to be on modern architecture in Cairo. A former uh, student of our program who went on and did a PhD at NYU and now is the foremost authority on modern architecture of Cairo just published a book on the topic and is going to come to speak about it on March 16, same time, same place. Muhammad al-Shahid is his name. So I hope to see as many of you as possible and thank you for being here today and please come and take a poster if you want, at least for the picture. For <laughs>